Hey guys, I'm Combat Craig, and today we're talking about getting paid 50% more money than you're currently getting. So when you're filing claims and figuring out what to file, you've probably already learned that uh, direct service connection claims when you've been out for 20 years isn't a good idea. If you haven't learned that one yet, now's a good time. Presumptive claims, right? The PACT Act. Guess what? Like allergic rhinitis and chronic sinusitis. Average rating. Zero, right? So secondary claims is the way to go. So I'm going to show you some secondary claims, and they're how you get paid. If you want to get 50% more money in your check every month, you need to figure out how to switch it up because what you're doing is not working. And I'm just like you. took me years to figure it out, but I'm on a good one now, and I know how to play the game. So secondary claims work like this. You need to have something service-connected, right? Disability number one, and then you can file as many secondaries on there as you want. Yeah, but it's been a while. It, so with secondaries, you don't have to worry about 40 years back to uh, service treatment records, anything like that. Secondaries just come on, right? You have one thing, and then another thing happens. It's logical. It makes sense. So what is in your body, and then what do you have service-connected, and can you get a doctor to write you a nexus? So check out my boot camp at combatcraig.com if you want to join me on a live session. And if you want to do secondary claims, you need medical evidence. Hit up my med team. They can help you with a current diagnosis, current symptoms, and a nexus. So I have a special guest today. It is old Combat Craig, and that's who I'm going to be doing the video with myself, I guess. Um, I explained it pretty good, so why, uh, why reinvent the wheel? Let's start off with VA claims for hypertension. Basically, hypertension is high blood pressure. You either have it or you don't, or you're probably going to get it. It's very common among veterans. I have it. Actually, you probably have it. So hypertension means high blood pressure. You have two numbers that are being measured. The top number is systolic pressure, and then the bottom number is diastolic pressure. And these are tied into your ratings. In order to win a VA claim for hypertension, you're going to need a current diagnosis in a medical record. So if that's your service treatment records, if you're doing a direct service connection claim, that works. We're talking about secondaries. So it either needs to be in your VA medical records or you got diagnosed by a private doctor. Need the diagnosis, you need the nexus. You need a link between your current diagnosis of hypertension and whatever you're trying to connect it to on a secondary basis. And then you need current symptoms, recurrent symptoms, that are bothering you right now. The higher the symptoms, the higher the rating. Here's how the VA rates hypertension. They're always going to use your diastolic pressure, but in the higher ratings, the 40 and the 60%, they're gonna drop the systolic pressures. A 10% VA rating for hypertension is if your diastolic pressure is 100 to 109, or your systolic pressure is 160 to 199. 20% rating for hypertension. If your diastolic pressure is 110 to 119, or your systolic pressure is 200 or higher. A 40% VA disability rating for hypertension is if your diastolic pressure is 120 to 129. They dropped the systolic on this part. A 60% VA rating for hypertension is warranted if your diastolic pressure measures 130 or higher. Hypertension secondary to sleep apnea. This is a popular claim. So, I'm going to link to this BVA decision. I encourage you to look at these because if you're trying to file hypertension secondary to sleep apnea, it would be good to see how other veterans successfully argued and unsuccessfully argued their claims. It's all on uh, bva.va.gov. So I'll put a link in the description. And basically the uh, facts of the case here is there's two different uh, doctor opinions. The CNP examiner, who does not represent you, the duty to assist doesn't exist. It's a joke. The CNP examiner represents the VA. Your doctor that you hire, he represents you. So basically the CNP examiner said no, and the uh, private doctor said yes, veteran won. This is called equipose, and tie goes to the runner, but it has to be a tie. VA claims for insomnia. Let's face it. <laughs> Veterans don't sleep well. I once got eight hours of sleep and it only took me three days. It's a joke, but there's some truth to it. 
Let me know if you got some insomnia symptoms going on. There's two different types of insomnia. There's acute insomnia, which lasts for hours or days. And then there's chronic insomnia, which we all have, which lasts for weeks, months, years, decades, right? Chronic insomnia. In order to win your VA claim for insomnia, you're gonna need a diagnosis, a nexus, and symptoms, all in medical records. If you don't have them in there from your VA doctors or service treatment records, get them from a private doctor. So how's the VA rate insomnia? Typically, it's a mental health rating. So mental health rating has the same criteria and it has uh, the same ratings, 0, 10, 30, 50, 70, and 100. Typically, insomnia comes in at around 30%. It's just the way that it is. If you want a higher rating like 70%, you should probably file a claim for insomnia and have a diagnosis symptoms and nexus and kick it up a notch with major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, PTSD. It couples better with one of these more serious conditions, but you know, it's all rated the same, but I'm telling you, if you just go file a claim for insomnia, 30% is the best you're gonna get. And that's if you meet everything perfectly. So 0% a mental health condition has been formally diagnosed, but it doesn't interfere with your work life. 10% occupational and social impairment due to mild or transient symptoms. I mean, it doesn't bother you that much. 30% occupational and social impairment with occasional decreased in work efficiency. 50% occupational and social impairment with reduced reliability and productivity. Now we're getting somewhere. 70% occupational and social impairment with deficiencies in most areas. And then 100% mental health rating is total social and occupational impairment. So it all comes down to your occupational and social impairment. You need to be talking about what's wrong in your social life with the kids, the wife, the girlfriend, the boyfriend, whatever's going on over there, or what's going on in the work life. If you have no problems in your social and work life and you're perfectly fine, you're gonna get a zero or not service connected. Well, you'll probably get a zero. VA claims for degenerative disc disease. This is a great secondary. Lots of you guys suffer from DDD, degenerative disc disease. I have it. We all have it. This is another one of those things that, you know, we all end up getting. So basically, you know, we're hard on our bodies in the military. And, you know, DDD means that the discs in your neck and your in your spine, you know, basically fail. So it could be anywhere in your cervical, your thoracic, or your lumbar spine. Any one of your discs. C1 down to L5-S1. And the discs just fail, right? So you start getting some bone-on-bone -bone action. This causes herniated discs, bone spurs, pinched nerves, you know, stuff like that. Currently, I have a 10 millimeter herniated disc at L5-S1 joint, and I'm not getting surgery on that. So I know well what that's like. And then I also had surgery on my neck for, I had an anterior discectomy, C3-4, C4-5 fused together. And that didn't do anything either. I still have the same pain. So pain in the neck, pain in the back. So if you have this, you're probably going to have some degenerative disc disease mixed in with it. It does not improve with age. A veteran's degenerative disc disease rating can be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then it jumps up to 100%. The VA ratings for degenerative disc disease depends on frequency, severity and duration of your symptoms. This is this is an orthopedic condition. So the symptoms are, they're going to be taking into account painful motion, limitation of range of motion and functional loss. So those are the things they're looking for. Degenerative disc disease is a great secondary claim and a secondary to a secondary. I was tell, talking about that in the beginning. If you have a rating for one thing and then you can service connect degenerative disc disease, then you can file another secondary claim for radiculopathy, the radiating pain. You can file a claim for radiculopathy secondary to degenerative disc disease. I also talked about radiculopathy in this other video, so I'll put a link in the description so you can go check that out. And I'll probably flash it on the screen right here somewhere. In order to win your VA claim for degenerative disc disease, diagnosis, nexus, symptoms. Common theme, right? How's the VA rate 
degenerative disc disease. First off, you're going to a CNP exam and they're gonna do the range of motion test. It's this little protractor thing. I've been looking all over for it. Clyde, did you go bury it? <laughs> I don't know where it is. It's this little protractor thing and the CNP examiner needs to be using that on you. He needs to take an actual measurement because measurements and degrees matter. And if that doctor just eyeballs you, I would challenge that as an inadequate CNP exam because no doctor or any human's eyes are calibrated to determine 29 degrees or 30 degrees. He's just eyeballing you. He's just kind of basically full of shit. He needs to use the goniometer. It's the protractor thingy. I'll flash it up on the screen here so you know what I'm talking about. VA claims for carpal tunnel syndrome. Typically, veterans get rated at 10%. It's mild, incomplete paralysis of the median nerve. So I have carpal tunnel syndrome. I actually have carpal tunnel syndrome. Actually, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Clyde scratched me too, right down that. So I have carpal tunnel syndrome. And then I also have ulnar nerve damage from surgery. I had surgery on my elbow, surgery on my neck. Came from somewhere, pretty sure the neck. Um, but we underreport our symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome, so we end up with 10% ratings. It can be painful. It tingles. For me, it's numbness. It comes down to what are your symptoms and how do you report them? And, you know, we get kind of trained. If you're listening to old Combat Craig, you're getting trained to talk about pain. This one, you might not have pain. It might just be numbness because numbness, I like my finger is probably 35, I don't know, percent numb. Ulnar nerve is this one and this one. Carpal tunnel's here. The carpal tunnel, there's actually a thing called a carpal tunnel. And um, it's a passageway surrounded by bones and ligaments and it gets uh, compressed. So numbness and stuff is a little bit different. For me, I, I worry more about pain. I wake up in the morning and there's pain all over the place. Chronic pain syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, don't have fibromyalgia because I didn't get a diagnosis for it, but I got a CNP exam for it. So pain's everywhere. Numbness in my fingers, like my typing's slower. It's irritating. It doesn't hurt. So if that's happening to you and it's numbness, you still need to talk about how inconvenient the numbness is and what it does to prevent you from working. If you're a typer or you work with your hands or you like just use your hand for anything, right? So you have to talk about it, even though it's not pain, you have to talk about the numbness, the tingling, whatever you experience. In order to win your VA claim for carpal tunnel syndrome, you need a current diagnosis, current symptoms, and a nexus. Carpal tunnel syndrome, in my case, it was caused by my failed back surgery. So I would probably do a secondary claim for carpal tunnel syndrome, secondary to my neck, but my neck's not service connected, it's not service related. So something to think about. Where'd that carpal tunnel come from? Was it really just typing and wrenching on stuff or was it something in active duty service? Here's how the VA rates it. They have complete paralysis. They call it severe incomplete paralysis, moderate incomplete paralysis, mild incomplete paralysis. So you can have it, this is a bilateral rating and it's, you know, paralysis of the median nerve and it's a uh, diagnostic code 8515. I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Hill and Ponton. If you need a VA disability attorney and you want to appeal some of this stuff, check them out at hillandponton.com. Also check out my boot camp and I will check you out next week when I come back with four or five more high value secondary VA claims. I'm telling you guys, you need to wrap your heads around high value and you need to wrap your heads around secondary VA claims. They are money. Get off your orthopedic conditions because you're only going to get 10%. Your hearing loss is always going to be at 0%. They're loser claims. Let's go for money claims and let's make it worth our while. I'll see you in the next one. So check out my boot camp at combatcraig.com if you want to join me in a live session. And if you want to do secondary claims, you need medical evidence. Hit up my med team. They can help you with a current diagnosis, current symptoms, and a nexus.